Good morning, students. Today we are going to know about the unit two of biology of chordates. First, let us know the first topic of the general characters of cyclostomata. Let us know about what is cyclo means circular and stoma means mouth. The organisms present in this phylum have, have circular mouth. Next point may be marine or freshwater in habitat. Uh, body is elongated and eel-like and body is divided, divisible into trunk and tail. Paid fins are absent. Median fins are supported by cartilaginous fin ray. Skin is smooth, soft sli and slimy and scales are absent. Some of the in like uh, Paces phylum uh, we can see that some uh, fishes have scales so, but in this cyclostomata uh, phylum scales are absent. Uh, next, notochord is persistence throughout the life. In some vertebrates, notochord will be converted into or uh, next developed into vertebrata, but uh, vertebrate. But in this phylum, the some of them the notochord will persist throughout their life. Uh, next, vertebrae are represented by imperfect neural arches present surrounding the notochord. Around the notochord, we can observe that uh, an imperfect neural arches will be present. Next, pharyngeal gill slits are found in which about 6 to 15 pairs of gills are present. In the diagrams, we can see that this is the mouth region. In the mouth region, we can observe the finger-like projections called as tentacles. It will help to grasp any substratum or something. Next, this one is eye and these are the opening of slime gland. Here, uh, the skin, uh, we read that skin is smooth, soft and slimy. Slimy means uh, some gelatinous substance is uh, excreted, secreted by this animal. So, here the opening of slime gland. Next, this is the pharyngeocutaneous duct and these are the banchial opening. And this is the tail region of the body. Next. Mouth without jaws, which means some of the animals have the upper jaw and the lower jaw, but these type of animals doesn't contain any type of jaws. So grouped under agnatha, this as this uh, organism doesn't have jaws, so these are grouped under the uh, class agnatha. Next, mouth is ventral, sectorial, and is circular. Mouth is surrounded by tentacles. As I said in the diagram. Uh, the mouth region is surrounded by the finger-like projections called tentacles, which is helpful for uh, also sectorial. And next, digestive uh, system lacks stomach, esophagus directly opens into the intestine. In this type of organism, we can, uh, in digestive system, some of the animals, uh, more of maximum of the animals contain stomach, but this type of animals doesn't have stomach. Directly, esophagus connects into the intestine. Next, excretion is by two mesonephric kidneys and next heart is two chambered with one auricle and one ventricle. Blood contains RBC, leukocytes and are poikilotherms. Nervous system includes a brain a, and a dorsal nerve cord. 8 to 10 cranial nerves are present. A median nasal chamber is found with a single nostril. Auditory organ is with one to semicircular rings. Reproduction is sexual. And fertilization is external, development direct by or prolonged larval stage. Dioecious animals. Next, let us know about the differences between mixin and the petromyzon. First, mixin. Mixin, uh, hackfishes. These mixins are also called as hackfishes. Hackfishes are scavengers. They penetrate into the dead fish's bodies and eat the tissues. Here we can observe these are called as scavengers. Why they are called as scavengers? They penetrate into the dead fishes. They eat the dead fishes and uh, those tissues. And next, petromyzon, also called as lampreys. These are semi-parasitic, but the larva amocytes leads an independent life. These are semi-parasitic uh, and these uh, in their life cycle they undergo one larval stage called amocytes they are they lead uh, independent life next the mixin the body of mixin is slender and eel like and the petromyzon is cylindrical and stout 
Next, mixin. They exclusively marine habitats. The maximum of the organisms present in the marine habitats. Next, petromycin. They live in both sea water and fresh water. First spawning, they migrate into the rivers. Next, the caudal fin is small, and here the in petromycin, the caudal fin is well developed. Mixin. The dorsal the dorsal fin is not fully developed. In petromycin, the dorsal fin is developed and is uh, and is divided into two portions by a notch. Next, the mouth is terminal in position. It is surrounded by soft lips. Buccal funnel is absent. In petromycin, mouth is subterminal in position and buccal funnel is present. Next, seventh point. Sixth, single nostril is present very near to the mouth. But in petromycin, we can observe that single nostril is on the dorsal side of the head region. Next, it has skull has no roof. In this petromycin, skull rock is incomplete. Next, small teeth are present on the tongue or in two rows. In petromycin, horny teeth are present in the buccal funnel region and on the tongue. Next, salivary glands are absent in mixing and paid salivary glands are present in the petromycin. In mixin, we can observe that the gill pouch number varies from 6 to 15 pairs. But in petromycin, we can observe only 7 pairs of gill pouches are present. Uh, in mixin, brain is degenerated. But in petromycin, uh, brain is completely well developed organism. Next, only 3 pairs of cranial nerves are present in mixin. And in petromycin, there are 10 pairs of cranial nerves are present. Non-functional paid eyes are burned in the skin uh, in mixin we can observe that they are paid eyes are present but they are non-functional they cannot uh, work pro pro properly but in petromycin there are paid eyes with uh, both the eyes are functional which can work properly next pineal eye is absent in the petro uh, mixin next uh, in uh, petromycin pineal eyes eye is present 16th point in the adult, pronephros is retained, but the functional kidney is of mesonephric type and simple. In petromycin, the functional adult kidney is mesonephric type. The in mixin, urinogenital sinus is not seen, but in uh, uh, petromycin, urinogenital sinus is formed. Sexes are united, which means the hermaphrodite. The anterior part of the gonad acts as ovary, and the posterior part acts as testis. In petromyzon, sexes are separate in petrom, uh, petromyzon, in which uh, what is hermaphrodite? In a single animal, if both the male and female are present in a single animal, that is called as hermaphrodite. Therefore, here we can see that in pet, uh, mixing, sexes are united, which means male and female an, uh, organisms are present in single animal only. The anterior part, which is the front part of the organism, is acts, acts as ovary and the posterior part act like act as testis which is the ovary is a female or reproductive organ and the testis is a male reproductive organ but in uh, petromycin we can see that sexes are separate which means the animals is uh, male animal is different and female animal is different next in mixing the uh, eggs are large and covered by a cylindrical horny shell a shell region is present and the eggs are very large but in petromycin, the eggs are very small and it uh, the end are not covered by any horny shell. Next, the development is direct. But in petromycin, the development is indirect, which means uh, during their life cycle, we can observe a larval stage, which is called as amocytes, is occurs in this development. Next, general characters of Pisces. They are found in fresh marine and brackish water. The body is usually streamlined, some have a spindle shaped or elongated body as well. Their body is distributed into head, trunk and tail. They swim with the help of their tail. Paid and unpaid fish represent the appendages. These help the fisher to balance while swimming. The lateral line system functions as a sensory organs to sense the disturbances in the nearby environment while they are swimming on the 
uh, water they sense the disturbances which uh, uh, occurs in the environment they sense by the lateral line system which is present on the body here we can observe the lateral line system this is the lateral line system uh, by this lateral lateral line system they can sense any disturbances around the environment next the body is covered with thick seated scales which help by providing protection to the internal organs here we can observe the scales here the body is entirely covered with scales which help for the protection next the gills help in respiration next the closer type blood circulation is observed the internal skeleton is bony or cartilage some fishes can uh, have bony cartil bony internal skeleton or some uh, fishes contain cartilaginous skeleton next these are cold blooded organisms they may have they may be herbivores carnivores oviparous or ovoviviparous next the sexes are separate as i said like uh, sexes are separate means male male fish will be different and female fish will be different organism next fertilization may be external or internal fertilization may be occur at water like uh, if the fertilization is external uh, fish will uh, uh, excrete secrete some sperms into the water and uh, as under fish excrete eggs into the water they mate eggs uh, they mate in uh, they sorry they mate and the embryo will be formed in uh, in the water but if the fertilization is internal means uh, the entire development of the organism uh, organism uh, comes in the fish only the digestive system is well developed next the nervous system comprises of the brain and 10 pairs of the cranial nerves the classification of pisces they are under class classified into three categories placodermy chondrichthys and osteichthys let us know about the next topic external features of the scoliodon the scoliodon is a vertebrate that is naturally found in oceans they are widely distributed in the indo-pacific oceanic region sometimes they are also found in estuaries they are predaceous active swimmers and voracious feeders next they have a laterally compressed long about 60 centimeters spindle shaped body which can be distinguished into the head trunk and tail their ventral surface is white or pale in color while their dorsal and lateral sides are pigmented dark gray the scoliodon's head is dorsal ventrally compressed and flattened to form the snout the head contains obliquely situated nostrils a slit like mouth and a laterally located protuberant eyes five pairs of gill clefts are located behind the eyes the trunk region has lateral paired fins and median unpaired fins the lateral paired fins include two posterior pelvic and two anterior pectoral fins likewise the median unpaired includes small second dorsal and large first dorsal fin the heterocircle tail with vertebral column and musculature is turned upwards two pigmented lateral lines are seen extended from head to tail the scoliodon shows sexual dimorphism the male have a pair of claspers cloaca is present between the two pelvic fins next this is the digestive system of scoliodon uh, what is digestive system here the digestive system is a physiological system by which a animal turns the complex food material into the simple absorbable absorbable simple food in order to keep functioning the body whatever food we take is the is completely in the complex food material again this complex food material it converts into the simple uh, food form Sim, uh, which is absorbable so this type of physiological process is called as digestive digestion next respiration the respiratory system is a physiological process in every organism by which they produce energy typically with the intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide the respiration of scoliodon is aquatic 
the breath with the help of gills the respiratory organs of scoliodon consist of five pairs of gill pouches contains gills all the five pairs of gill pouches are present in the series in the lateral wall of the pharynx behind the hyoid arch each gill pouches opens into the pharynx by a large internal branchial aperture and to the outside by a narrow vertical external branchial aperture or gill slit a gill slit a gill septum or interbranchial septum separates the two adjacent gill pouches what is the next topic mechanism of respiration the mechanism of respiration completely uh, uh, depends on two two types inspiration and expiration first let us know about the inspiration a series of hypobranchial muscles contract and the gill arches expands thus pulling down the floor of the buccopharyngeal cavity and enlarges its cavity as the external gill slits are tightly closed and the buccopharyngeal cavity is expanded the water from the surroundings enters the buccopharyngeal cavity next expiration adductor uh, muscles close the mouth at the same time the constrictor and interbranchial muscles contract the floor of the pharynx raised and reduced its volume by the contraction of the constrictor and interbranchial muscles as a result water is forced into gill pouches over the gill lamellae and out through the open external gill slits the gill septum is covered by an epithelium and contain blood vessels nerves etc the mucous membrane lining the gill pouches gives a series of horizontal branchial lamellae or gill lamellae the gill lamellae are highly vascularized the first gill pouch lies between the hyoid and the first branchial arches and the last one is present between the fourth and fifth branchial arches the fifth branchial arch of scoliodon is gillless other branchial arches support gills there are two types of gills are present in the scoliodon they are hollow branch or complete gill and the demi branch or hemi branch or half gill first one hollow branch the branchial arch bear two sets of gill lamellae the first four branchial arches support hollow branch here we can observe these are called as gill lamellae to the branchial cartilage both sides we can observe gill lamellae but in demi branch or half uh, hemi branch the branchial arch bears a single set of gill lamellae the hyoid arch supports only demi branch here we can observe we can observe the two gill lamellae are present but here we can observe single set of gill lamellae so that is called as this one is called as hollow branch this is called as hemi branch next structure and function of brain in scoliodon the brain lies enclosed within the chondrocranium and is made up of the same three basic parts of the vertebrate brain fore brain mid brain hind brain here every uh, in humans also we can observe three parts of brain that is fore brain mid brain hind brain likewise only in the scoliodon brain we can observe three parts first one fore brain is consists of two parts anteriorly cerebrum and posteriorly diencephalon cerebrum is large undivided and bears a stout olfactory stalk or peduncle on each lateral side and in midbrain it is not a prominent part and remains closely concealed dorsally by cerebellum and ventrally by the infundibular outgrowths next hindbrain it consists of two parts cerebellum and medulla oblongata cerebellum is large elongated and rhomboidal structure overhanging the optic lobes in front and part of the medulla behind next migration in fishes in ecology it is an animal behavior of mass movement of animals from one place to the another place what is migration the 
Movement of one place to the other place is called as migration. In this, we can observe that fishes migrate from one place to the other place based on their different phenomena. The purpose of migration varies according to accordingly with the types of animals. Migratory behavior of fish is a regular phenomenon. Their journey is purposed mainly for feeding and reproduction. Types of fish migration: diadromous migration, potamodromous migration. Oceanodromous migration, latitudinal migration, vertical migration, and shoreward migration. First, diadromous migration. It is the migration of fish between sea, sea water to the fresh water. The fishes move from the sea water to the fresh water. As we know, most of the fishes are restricted to either fresh water or sea water. But in this diadromous migration, the fish moves from Sea water region to fresh water region. The changes in the habitat may cause osmotic imbalance in this in those fishes. However, some fishes regularly migrate between sea and fresh water and have perfect osmotic balance. They are true migratory fishes. The migration is of two types. In diadromous, again it is divided into two types: anadromous and catadromous. Firstly, uh, know of, uh, know about anadromous migration. It is the migration of marine fishes from sea water to fresh water for spawning. Fishes spend most of their life living and feeding in sea. They only migrate during breeding season to the river for spawning ground. Example: salmon, hisla, lamprey, etc. Salmon migrate for breeding during winter from sea to river. While migrating, some physiological changes occur, like Uh, it stops feeding during the journey while the journey between the sea water from from the sea water to the fresh water they stop fe uh, feeding during entire the journey process next it changes color from silver to dull reddish brown while migration they change the body color of the the color of the body changes from silver color to the reddish brown color next the gonads mature next catadromous migration it is the migration of freshwater fishes from river to sea as we can observe that in the anadromous migration the fishes migrate from the sea water to the fre fresh water but in the catadromous we can observe that uh, the migration of freshwater fishes from river to the sea during the breeding season for spawning example eel both european eel and the american eel migrate from the continental rivers to Sargasso Sea of Bermuda in South Atlantic for spawning crossing Atlantic Ocean before and during migration some physiological changes occur in their body uh, it deposits large amount of fat in their body while serves as reserved food during the journey uh, in their uh, complete uh, migration journey they reserve their food as a, as in the amount of fat next it changes uh, color from yellow to metallic silver gray in the anadromic migration uh, we have read that the color of the body changes from silver to the reddish brown but here in catadromous the color changes from the yellow to the metallic silvery gray next digestive tract shrinks and stop feeding the digestive tract of the fishes becomes shrink shrink and stops feeding and eyes get enlarged and vision sharpens other sensory organs also become sensitive skin serves respiratory organ gonads get matured and enlarged the lay sorry the lay eggs sorry they lay eggs in suitable spawning ground and fertilized by males after spawning they die the larva hatch out and develop into young eel and finally returns to the river next potamodromous migration it is the freshwater migration of fresh from one habitat to another for feeding or spawning example carps and catfishes next oceanodromous migration it is the migration of fish within the sea oceanodromous within the sea in search of suitable feeding and spawning ground example crabia thammus tuna next latitudinal it is the migration of fish from north to south and vice versa it is a climatic migration here we can observe that latitudinal means 
north to south they migrate from the north to south or south to north vice versa so this is called this type of migration is called as latitudinal migration they they migrate base uh, the migration is completely depends on the climate based on climate they migrate from one one uh, one per area to another area example swordfish migrate north in spring and south in autumn next vertical migration it is a daily migration of fish from deep to the surface and vice versa for food protection and spawning next shoreward migration it is the migration of fish from water to land however it is a temporary migration eel uh, examples eel migrate from one pond to the another pond via moist meadow grasses what is the significance of fish migration to find the suitable feeding and spawning ground they are in search of uh, a suitable feeding and for the spawning ground they migrate to one place to the another place for protection from predators as the uh, as a as it is a defense mechanism for the uh, for to protect ourselves like that they protect from the predators they move from one place to the another place next survive from extreme climatic conditions and increases genetic diversity it is an adaptational characters for survival and existence next types of scales there are four types of scales they are cycloid tenoid placoid and ganoid scales first cycloid scales are uniform and have smooth texture cycloid scales are large thin and oval in shape the outer edge of cycloid scales are small here in picture we can observe the cycloid scales are large and thin they are very thin and here we can observe that they are oval in shape and the outer edge of the cycloid scales are smooth example carp next tenoid scales tenoid scales are similar to cycloid scales these are mostly similar to the cycloid scales except they have small teeth called tenai on the outer edges of the scales here we can also here uh, we cannot observe any teeth like structure in this scale but in tenoid scales we can observe that teeth like structure is present at the so one edge of the gill so this type of scales is called as tenoid scales example perch or sunfish next placoid scales placoid scales are triangular rough structure bony spiny projections placoid scales are present in cartilaginous fish example sharks here we can observe the structures bit on this uh, gill sorry scale is like spiny like structures bony like structures so this type of uh, rhomboidal structures this type of uh, structures is called as placoid scales next ganoid scales ganoid scales are similar to the placoid scales ganoid scales are uh, covered with enamel like substance called ganoin examples gas morphin here we can observe the rhomboidal shape is present in the ganoid scales they are mostly similar to the placoid scales next final last topic of this unit to dipnoi fishes dipnoi is an order which specifies to bony lung fishes it is the subclass of sarco uh, sarcopteridae uh, they originated in the early devonian period fishes belonging to this order are obtained from the mud of the dried river and used as food by humans they refer to the fishes they are living in fresh water and mainly bony in nature they are provided with plate teeth the respiration in these fishes takes place by means of both gills and lungs presence of the lungs for respiration shows that they are formed to the amphibians hence they are known as lung fishes in these types of fishes in this type of dipnoi fishes we can observe they can respire through both lungs and gills so this type of fishes are called as dipnoi fishes here these are the examples for dipnoi fishes australian lungfish african lungfish south american lungfish devonian lungfish the uh, the fishes which can respire through both gills and lungs is called as dipnoi fishes 
these fishes are provided with swim bladder which are the modification of lungs used for the exchange of gases in the water and it helps to maintain the buoyancy to swim in the water these fishes are long and appear similar to snakes but morphology doesn't dictate evolutionary relationships these are regarded as the closest living relatives of relatives of tetrapods and have many characteristics similar to them these lungfishes can live even when the pool dries by digging into mud and covering themselves with a mucus layer at this time where there is no water they respire through swim bladder